this is this is my life. This is what I do all day, every day. Because I work in, in the Rabobank and I work in the sales department, and we do all do all kinds of checks. Checks if you're if you committed fraud. Checks if you can afford the product. Uh, check if you're on a sanction list. So this the question I'm trying to answer all day is: Can we do business with you? And uh, like Vincent talked into in the in the keynote, we used to do that with WebSphere, and WebSphere worked really well. It it solved a lot of problems for us, but things changed. The world changed. Customers expect more. Uh, we need to deploy more often, and it's just not working anymore because it doesn't really fit the needs uh, that we have today. So we needed to change something. So, uh, like you hear, you heard in the keynote, we went to build the whole Cloud Foundry. Won't talk too much about that, um, but that was basically to fix our development issues because with uh, WebSphere, you code something, you press run, and then you go get a cup of coffee. Because in about five minutes, WebSphere, your application will have been loaded, and you can actually check if what you've built, if, sh if that's actually working. And that doesn't feed uh, our development needs any more, anymore. Because in this presentation, I want to give you three factors you need to get right in today's development cycle to really get that performance, to get that big bang, to be able to deliver value fast. And this is the first. It's getting a quick and fast development cycle. You press play and you instantly know, did it work? Well, we use Spring Boot, but that's not necessarily the case for you. Um, but you need to get that quick development life cycle. Press play, see if it works. That's something Spring Boot fixes for us, and PCF fixes our deployment issues, because uh, deploying WebSphere can be quite tricky and also time-consuming. Um, PCF fixes that for us, and you need to get that right as well. That's, th that's the second bit. You need to get that right. You need to be able to quickly deploy. And I'm not saying everyone should go to PCF. You can also use Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or whatever suits you need as, lo as long as you're able to deploy fast and deploy easily. Well, now you have the opportunity to develop fast and you can deploy fast, um, but you're not there yet. Because we went to a microservices world and previously we had this big monolith and a single uh, deployment pipeline and now we have 10, 15, maybe 20 microservices working together. So now you have 10, 15, 20 deployment pipelines. Well, that just doesn't work. So we, we, we fixed that. Um, what we did is we used Jenkins, because we previously used Jenkins, and we created a generic pipeline for our, our microservices. So now we have a single pipeline with a couple of services going through that pipeline. And that's really working for us really well. So we have a single pipeline that does the testing, the integration testing, the deployment, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a template for, uh, for our microservices. And that's something I would really recommend you to look into. Because now we have been able to deploy a new microservices really fast. So now we have, uh, we have that in place. We have... Uh, uh, the technical merits out of the way, and we saw that the way we were working in the previous way that didn't really work well. Because we had uh, we had a developer, he got a, picked up a story, he did some coding, then uh, he got a pull request, and then that thing is just hanging there till some some other one picks it up. Now, then he writes some feedback, and then the pull request is pending again, because the initial developer is doing some other task. So then eventually he'll, he'll pick it up again, and he does some more coding, and he does a second pull request, or where he updates the pull request. And again, it's pending for other developers to look at it. And then finally, you do a merge, and you get it to production. Um, but if you have bad luck and you, yeah, you interpreted the business requirements wrong, you can do this whole thing all over again. So that didn't, wasn't really working. We were working as a group of collaborating individuals and not really as a, as a team. 
it's really weird that if you look at some teams that you see a couple of developers all with a headset on and not really talking together. So we thought we'd fix that. And we started doing um, mobbing and pairing. And now, what is mobbing and pairing? What we use is a big screen and a, a bar table, a high table. Um, and we pick up a task and we do it together. The two of us, or maybe even three developers. And it sounds counterintuitive that you have more than one developer picking up a single task and while they could be working in parallel. But um, it comes with a lot of benefits. One is that the whole development cycle you saw uh, in the previous slide, yeah, that's no longer the case. Because we're constantly reviewing. We're constantly giving feedback to each other and um, immediately changing code based on that feedback. And that's something that really speeds up the process because we have really quick feedback, no more code reviews. And an additional benefit is that what we previously sometimes did is that have, we have this junior developer pick up the small task because that's the only thing he, he can't handle the heavy tasks just yet. Uh, but we now pick it up together, or the three of us. And now he really gets to know the application and know how to really proper, uh, write proper code. Uh, and also, when someone is now on holiday, we don't have uh, issues anymore. Where we previously had that sometimes, yeah, I don't know this piece of the application because he wrote it and I wasn't there. We don't have that anymore. We have now a couple of people who know about that part of the application. We also saw that we just write less bugs because four I spot more than two and also because you're, you're into the process. But sometimes we do get more complex um, stories and then we ask for even more people to join us. We ask our business analysts to join us so that we correctly interpret uh, the functionality that we need to build um, from his description. Um, and that has benefits that we less often um, write, write wrong code. Basically, it, it works, but not as spec. And the additional benefit we have is that business analysts now get our work, get what we do. And so he writes spec, which more, are more suitable to our needs. So that's really cool. Um, so now the, the development cycle is, is going faster, but we still had some yeah, overhead, and I call those uh, refinement meetings. Because it's kind of weird that you do a once a week or twice a week, you have a meeting and there you create some stories and you write some documentation and uh, you poke at them. What we now do, if we see a new story that needs to be picked up, we immediately open, you know, we use Tracker uh, or Jira, um, and immediately write story and immediately try to poke at the story. Because it's now fresh in memory, we know exactly what the problem is. Multiple people see the problem because you're doing it together and that really works really well because we don't have any refinements anymore. It's all done at the mobbing station. And uh, even another meeting we have, yeah, we do it every week. Most of you will do it every two weeks. It's the sprint demo. We try to do that. Yeah, we still do that for external uh, stakeholders, but for our internal stakeholders, our PO, we just, awesome, thank you. Uh, we just do it immediately when the story is finished. Because then you don't have to prepare the demo, set up the test environment again, because you just implemented the story and it's all been set up, and now you can just go show it, PO says, that's good, bring it to production, and put it in your generic pipeline. And uh, yeah, go. Um, but we still see some uh, room for improvement. Um, we have a couple of uh, microservices, and you see that some functionality is duplicate. For instance, metrics. So we, uh, for future steps, we want to try to remove that common functionality um, and put that somewhere else. Maybe in the, fr in the framework we build it in, on the platform we deploy it on, or gets injected by a pipeline. We don't know yet, but that's an opportunity we see. Uh, I mentioned that we use Spring Boot. So we use the start.spring.io to generate an application. And I don't know if you know, but you can fork that repository and then tweak it. You can tweak it to make your own baseline uh, images. So then when you start a new application, or create a new application, you have everything set up the way you want to. Um, 
automate more. It's, it's really simple. It's, we, we still have some manual tasks and we, we want to remove those. And what we, um, what we really like is um, we're now starting to experiment in, in changing team members. Because we have a similar uh, team next to us who does, does similar things. And we exchange people from time to time. And then we can learn from them and they can learn from us. And that really works well. And um, with that, we have done some amazing things. We work at the bank, so that has the image of being slightly slow. But for an external party who requested some functionality, we brought an, uh, an application live within a week, from spec to uh, production. And even further, for an internal party, we had a spec for REST endpoints, and we brought the entire application from implementation to testing to build pipelines. Everything within a single day, we brought it live, and uh, the external party was able to use it. So that's really cool. What I want, really want to stress is get these th three things right. Um, quick developer cycle, easy integration, and some real, real teamwork. Thank you.